look, I mean, you could have tried to fight Usher. He would have right. done the it was Eok. Your take away from the performances. I'm gonna fight Usher. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Bro would have done like bro would have emoted on me right after yeah, and went he right back to it. Yeah, he would have done like the robot like <laughs> 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 pulled, out, yeah. pulled out his roller skates and kicked the <laughs> <out of> you. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Coconut Curry Podcast, episode 22. On this episode, we're going to be going over Super Bowl 58, talking about the halftime show, which we might have a controversial take on that, um, grading every team's playoff performance, and then we're going to finish off with a little bit of a Valentine's Day. What do we love about the NFL, boys? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Happy Valentine's Day to all. Yeah, happy Yay. Valentine's Day. Big holiday. I hate this holiday. <laughs> <laughs> For anybody listening on audio, I just tried to kiss Ross. <laughs> this is just a corporate holiday meant for you to spend more money. Don't fall for the government scams. Okay, like says the broke boy. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, it is a it is a scam. Oh no, it, it's it, it, so <laughs> it is. I just spent sixty five dollars on roses. Yeah, um, it's definitely a scam. But I'm gonna pay for it anyway. But you have to, you have to pay. It. It's like paying the gonna, Call of Duty tax yeah. every year. <laughs> hey, I have not paid the Call of Duty tax this year. Yet. Yes, well, good well, man. Yeah, well, because it's yes. garbage this year. But that's a whole other thing. I'm We're getting like, off topic. <laughs> once the price drops to thirty dollars, then I might shoot. I've, I've always hated valentine's day through yeah. and through i'm always like this is just like a money grab because yeah. everybody posts on social media first of all i posted on my instagram story today um i so many people are in relationships that i never knew were in relationships and this happens every single year where i'm like you're dating someone like since when they just like pull up on valentine's day yeah well, you know, it's people got to do what launch they day. Yeah, I know. It's hard launch day. That's true. <laughs> people got to do what they got to do, but people it always cracks it always cracks me up a little bit. Oh, yeah. Um, but you're not here to hear about Valentine's Day. You're here to talk about sports. Um, but before we go into that, if you're new here, we're three college students at the University of Pittsburgh. I'm Justin. My co-hosts Raj and Peter are here with us, and we're on all platforms: YouTube, Apple, Spotify, wherever you find your podcasts. We just chat about sports. Hopefully, offer a fresh new perspective. Um, 71 subscribers on YouTube. Wow, getting we're, close oh to 100. God. We've we're, plateaued a little bit. We're getting to the march. For the wooden plaque. Yes. Oh, we're get, almost there. I'll get there. 49ers fans riled up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll get, and we'll, we'll just get to the end there. Um, and like I said, happy Valentine's Day. Just remember, if you're watching this podcast, you will never be happier than Travis and Taylor are. So yeah. you might as well just give up now. Unfortunately, watching them, it was like, damn, I'm never going to yeah. be that happy in my yeah, life. Like, I was like, I might as well just give up. <laughs> like, One's a billionaire that just won her fourth album of the year award. One's a three-time Super Bowl champion going down as one of the greatest tight ends of all time. And we just have a podcast. And we're sitting here with a podcast. Just two white guys in Raj and a podcast. Yeah, we, yeah. Suffering builds character. Suffering, Suffering builds, builds character. character. <laughs> Suffering builds character. Usually we start off every episode reacting to comments, but we have none to react to. Uh, some late posts last week led to yeah. low engagement. Yeah, um, okay. But I did want to gloat a little bit because <laughs> I think we all actually deserve to gloat a little bit because a common thread we got on all of our posts throughout the Super Bowl were that we didn't know what we were talking about. Of course. And to... Raj was off on a lot of things, and but, we'll, we'll ignore him a little bit. But Peter and I correctly predicted the Super Bowl matchup before it all started. Yes. We both predicted Chiefs 49ers to start a playoffs. Now, Peter wavered a little bit, but yes, he made the prediction in the beginning he was right. Then we both accurately predicted the Chiefs to win the Super Bowl. Peter predicted they would win by three. The Chiefs won by three points. So if there's anybody to, like, gloat, it's us. Like we we did this right. We made the predictions in the beginning of the playoffs. When we got to the predicting the playoffs, like 49ers or Chiefs, we made the right prediction. I've been predicting the Chiefs every step of the way. Yeah, you've been getting you've been roasted for it and they won. So I think like this is me reacting to the comments like most of us were right yeah, we on this podcast. So, so when so. you say we have bad takes, we don't. Maybe you just need to listen a little bit more. Yeah. Um I just hated both teams and did not want to did not want to I picked with emotion. That's why you were gay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Apparently, allegedly, apparently. according yeah, to the you comments. didn't hear that. Raj got called gay for not wanting the Chiefs to make the Super Bowl. Yeah, which was a wild. Oh well, yep. whatever. It, it'd be like that. <laughs> oh, no. Anyway, it'd be like that. <laughs> maybe we'll have more uh, comments to react to next week. Yes, but please. for now, we're going to move on to disgruntled moment of the week. Um, this is where we talk about someone, usually ourselves or players, who are dissatisfied or angry. Hence, the world dis were disgruntled. Um, Raj, start us off here because I know where you're going and. Might take you a minute. Ah, uh, yes. So, Debo Samuel, <laughs> first off, you suck. I just want to put that out there. I hate you. And I'm so glad Fletcher Cox put you back in his back in your place on Insta right after you lost. But it's all like, like right after the loss, too. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, not oh even God. like some breathing room. Like, we, we were still at the, we were still all together after the Super Bowl when these yeah. posts came out. Mm -hmm. And Debo, you know what? The Mount Rushmore of Debo crying after losing big games is complete. Yep. I hate you, Debo. <laughs> and you should realize you are overhyped for no reason. And Brandon Ayuk is taking your spot. But oh no, he's leaving. 
and half your teammates are probably going to leave in free agency. Uh oh, Debo, are you still going to talk about the Eagles now for no reason during the press conference? <laughs> What was this about? It's not much of a rivalry when we blow you guys out. Are you going to keep crying and about, oh, but we lost our QB? Keep it going, bud, because you went to the Super Bowl and lost to the same quarterback and the same team we lost to. I hate you, Debo. <laughs> Check yourself. You are not that good also at football. You are trash. <laughs> you are, Just like they said, Darius Slay said you are. You're a running back. Anyways, that's all. <laughs> there we go. That was shorter than I thought. That was well. Well, still good though. Yeah, there's still a lot yeah, I can course. say. I just yeah. don't. Yeah, wanna... you gotta. You can't put that on air. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Peter, disgruntled moment of the week. Uh, d- I'm very disgruntled with uh, myself. Um, so uh, I got some meatball sliders for the Super Bowl party that we were hosting, and I was like, oh yeah, these are gonna be really good. Um, I forgot to turn the oven on when I was putting them in the oven to like heat them up, and uh, my girlfriend came in and was like, oh, like are you making them? And, she, and I'm like, yeah. She's like. No, the oven's not on, right? <laughs> I look at the oven, and I'm like, it's not on. <laughs> it's, That's when you go, yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you just got to dole it out. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I know. But uh, they ended up being fine after I realized that I needed to turn the oven on. But, you know, that ended up working out. But in that moment, I don't think I could have wanted to throw myself under a bus more. Yeah. Because <laughs> that uh, was rough. <laughs> they were good meatball sliders. They were good. They were very good. Um, and then my disgruntled moment of the week is players who can't keep their emotions in check. So this goes to the Travis Kelsey controversy that we will talk about surely in the Super Bowl <sighs> recap. But put him under the death penalty. It's but, he, he has no right to live at this a point. A bunch of players um, came out afterwards and were like, if I did this, X, Y, Z would happen. And then like undisputed with Skip Bayless made like a racial argument and everything. Boys, like if you can't keep your emotions in check and you think like if you have in the past not kept your emotions in check and then you're like, but if I did that, I would get like whatever happened to me. You're not in the same situation as Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey has been with Andy Reid for now three Super Bowls. Yeah. He's been with Andy Reid for far Andy. longer than that. He's the most tenured player on that Chiefs team. It's like, what, nine, ten years at least? Yep. Yeah. Andy Reid always talks about how Travis is like the player he understands the most because he's just hyper competitive and hyper emotional. Yeah. So like unless you were in that exact stereo like in that exact like neat niche of like I've been with my coach for 10 years. Yeah. And if I had to like done that to him and he encourages I, me to be emotional in yep. big situations. Like, and then, so like, I know AJ Brown was a player who came out and was like, if I did that, like the, the media would be all over me. It's like, number one, the media is kind of all over Travis Kelsey. Um, and then number two, like it's not Travis's fault that you can't control your emotions and make bad decisions. Like not talking to the media for two weeks while the Eagles were losing games. Like that's on you. Like it's not, that's not the media narrative. That's like you didn't talk to the media. Yeah, that's your job. Um, it's not like Travis Kelsey like was like I'm not going to take any questions about what uh Coach yeah, Re- Coach immediately Re- responds to it. Um, <laughs> immediately came out there and was like, yeah, you know, big guy and I were just having a friendly little yeah. conversation, and then Andy Reid talked about it. Like they talked about it minutes after the game, <laughs> like, game immediately ended. after, <laughs> and then they talked about it in press conferences afterwards. I'll talk about it in exit interviews more. Yeah, they probably they Jason about Kelsey like called out Travis on the podcast they have yeah. about it. So this idea that like these players who are all upset about this because they can't control their own emotions or upset yeah. about it. Like uh, get a life. I'm I like, think they're just, well, look, are we just going to jump right into it at this point? Cause like we easily could just like, yeah, go let, straight. let's go. You know what? Screw it. We're just going to get right into this. So, uh, for those that didn't watch the Super Bowl, I don't even know how you did. Where are we this. talking about the Travis Kelsey thing? Uh, yeah, yeah okay, cool. we're just jumping right into this. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how you didn't watch the Super Bowl if you somehow didn't watch because uh, 125 million people on average are watching it. That's more than the moon landing, which is the most ridiculous thing I've ever said say in my life. But apparently that was true. God, the moon, the moon landing must have been so hyped. Do you think there were betting lines like, will it land or no? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, yeah. let's think about something for a second. So that's 125 million like screens, essentially, that yeah. showing up. More people were probably watching it. But think about 125 screens during the 1970s i know it's, it's that's everyone. every household in america yeah like every yeah. single one was watching that insane utterly ridiculous but that's a side note but for the shadow people, of Apollo 11 yeah shout out Apollo 11 <laughs> so for anybody that somehow didn't watch during the super bowl chiefs got off to a rough start the 49ers had all the momentum um and uh they chiefs were trying to like they were driving it was like it was all good um, Travis Kelsey comes off the field um, just for like some package that they were bringing in and they're in the red zone and Isaiah Pacheco fumbles the ball like on like the five yard ten line, yard line ten yeah. yard line and then Niners recover they get all the momentum and then Travis Kelsey pretty quickly goes right up to Andy Reid and starts basically screaming in his face and no one really like knew what was going on and then Andy Reid kind of got bumped yep. and 
the, everybody saw this and was like, oh my God, Travis Kelsey needs to be executed on the spot for yep. this. And this was when all the players that I was talking about kind of came out and was like, if yeah. I did that, I would be like, yeah. I would be executed and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, like I would be banned. I would never be able to play football again. When we're literally forgetting that weeks ago, Andy Reid basically did the exact same thing to Travis when Travis was being an idiot. He walks up and clearly on yep. purpose bumps him, really like cool. yeah. gets in his face and it's like, you got to calm down. And then, you know, like they start talking, whatever, it's fine. And then when Travis comes up, you can clearly see that during the Super Bowl, when Travis comes up, he came up like a little too quick and then realized that he bumped Andy Reid and then reaches out to catch him because he doesn't want him to fall over. And he's just mad about the situation. And then, of course, it comes out later that like this, ha- like stuff like this happens like all the time. Rasheed Rice and Patrick Mahomes were getting it, like we're going at yep. it a little bit on the sideline because it's an emotional game. Yeah, listen, you don't want to show up your coach like Jason yes. and Travis talked about it on the podcast. Like Travis knows he was in the wrong. Jason like was like Travis, you can't do that. Like they both yeah. acknowledge like you should not be doing that to your coach. But also, there's an acknowledgement of the situation is extremely unique between Travis and Andy. It was an emotional moment in the Super Bowl. Both Andy and Travis aren't upset about it. So I don't know why everybody else is more upset, is upset about it on their behalf. Because yeah, the, the whole thing is, is like, I honestly think that at a certain point, those players that are getting like mad that like, oh, well, Travis did it. I think they're genuinely jealous that yeah. they that Travis can show his emotions like that. And his coach is like, good, mm-hmm. like and, get pissed. And what bothers me is these other players who are saying that like Travis has paid his dues and oh is a le- like he has been there. He's been drafted there. He's been there the entire time. Again, he's the most tenured player on that uh, Chiefs team. He's been there before Patrick was there. He's one of the greatest tight ends of all time. He plays with a lot of emotion. He's been an example for the league for a bunch of years, and for, yeah. has supported his fellow tight ends in their in their path to be like good NFL players. Like if there's any guy that gets away with it, it's him. And people are just like. I couldn't get away with that. It's like, yeah, because you're like you your whole career you've been causing problems. That's like, <laughs> like who's a who's a good example of a player who always gets like in trouble? Draymond Green. Yeah, that's like Draymond <laughs> Green. That's like Draymond Green seeing like LeBron James hit somebody on or the not, head not by even hit somebody. It was like went up and like was like getting in somebody's face like on the sideline. Mm-hmm. It was like kind of bumping them. Whatever. Yep, and then he was like. See, like, if I did what LeBron did, I would have gotten, like, fined or suspended. And it's like, yeah, you would have, because that's, like, a repeat, like, 10th offense. Travis is, yeah. like, a... Travis is only offense is that he's too emotional for, like, the 100th time, but everyone knows he's too emotional, and Andy Reid loves it. So, yeah. that's what I got to say. Raj, do you have any takes on that? I thought it was funny, and the memes were <laughs> even better. <laughs> the memes are elite. Those are so good. I just saw it. I'm like, huh, cool. Travis yelling at Andy Reid. Okay, yeah. anyways, like I didn't think it was a big and, deal. And just like they came off the field and made such light of it. And yeah. you can just tell it doesn't bother any of them. And that's no. why co- that's why Andy Reid's a great coach. Because yeah. he doesn't like some other coaches would have been on an ego trip, would have been so oh, upset yeah. that they got like put on. Like, you don't want to show up your coach like that. But Andy Reid's like, I don't care. Yeah, like, I don't care. We won. Yeah, like, we won. Why, why do I care? And they're going <laughs> to come back next year and probably win the Super Bowl again. And then <laughs> don't say that. Please. Don't. That. But anyway. <laughs> but anyway, let's get into the game. That's that. Let's get into the game. Uh, Chiefs win Super Bowl 58. 25 to 22 it's the first time we've seen the new overtime rules in the playoffs and yeah. we got to see it in the super bowl what is the it first? was a fantastic oh, yeah. second half of football yes. the first half was historically rough that, like, that sucks. granted very good defense just not i would super super i would argue the first half was worse than the rams patriots game because there were fumbles and like weird things that had happened that led to the game like dude the rams patriots that was, was bad, i know dude. but the first half i was out of it the first half was it was a little bit it was a little bit rough in the first half. I won't lie. It was it was a pretty rough watch. There were some great you cannot deny that there were some great defensive plays though during that. There first were. Half. There really were. The the Trent McDuffie on Debo Samuel like break pass breakup in the end zone was ridiculous. Debo wouldn't have caught it anyway. He I, I think that ball was going out the back of the end zone anyway. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. But um yeah, that first half was a little rough. The second half that hit like crack cocaine. Yep. That was amazing. Because <laughs> the first half, so I guess we'll just we'll kind of talk about like our reactions to the game, and then we have some questions like yeah. from there. Um, like after the, the first half was just like it was. It ended ten three. There were a lot of boring stuff, like the the trick play from Jawan Jennings. Jawan Jennings throws sick. a touchdown. Yeah. That was sick. Also, Pretty I close. did call beforehand that a uh, non quarterback was coming. Yeah, you did call. You should have bet it. Should have bet it. <sighs> Whatever. Um, but then the second half starts off with. Pacheco dropping a toss like first play of the game yeah. they do this halfback toss 
drops it. Then Patrick Mahomes throws an interception but like yeah. between two receivers. So then it's like, oh my God, the Chiefs so are screwed. Like, so yeah, you're like, the Chiefs are screwed. The uh, 49ers have great field position. They're at their own 40. Yeah, great field position, all the momentum in the and world. Then Kansas City just stops them. Yeah. Like, and they, they have to punt the ball away. So instantly, right off the bat, like you've got this dramatic situation where you're like, if the 49ers go down, they're going to be up by 14 points. If they get three, they're going to be up yeah. by 10 points. And then Kansas City defense does a great job. And then from there, you just start clicking off these drives that end in field goals and touchdowns and yeah. all this exciting stuff. And it just built up to a moment of like exactly what you want to see with one minute, 53 seconds left, two timeouts. Patrick Mahomes dude, need a field goal to go to dude, overtime. Touchdown wins the game. Like classic. Dude. Okay. So watching that sideline when they saw they only came away with a field goal um and they knew that Mahomes was getting the ball like you look at all those players on the sideline they were like like yeah. we're going 100%. OT like yeah. there was there was no doubt in anybody's mind like yep they're going to overtime like they are going within field goal range Butker is not missing this kick they are easily getting within range because what it was like a minute something with mm. two timeouts that's it's too like much time way too much time at the clock for Mahomes like that was ridiculous ridiculous how much time they left on the clock it it's stuff of legends because you just you see it on pat's face you see it on teammates face. you hear players say that it's like they just know what that that situation with that little time left and, and not to mention like that in that situation it's four down territory at mm -hmm. all times yeah like giving him four chances to get a first down like he's getting them. Like every like it's just everyone says it. they're like we knew we were getting the field goal it's just if we could get down to the red zone and yeah. get a touchdown and like, you know, that's what's going to happen. And it happens every time. Patrick Mahomes has been doing this for years. And it's just, yeah. it's like very Jordan-esque. I wouldn't say like LeBron's not that type of player, but it's what people say about Jordan where you just knew he'd get the job done in the yeah. clutch. Um, even though he's not a better clutch player than LeBron. But not, not, <laughs> that's not, 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 not a debate, debate for right that. Um, but like, you just knew he was going to take the final shot. And he was going to hit it. You just knew he'd come through in the finals or whatever. It's like, you just know Patrick Mahomes with little time left and some timeouts can get the job done. He did the same thing at the end of the half. They had a lot more time in that, but they mm -hmm. went down the field, almost got a touchdown, but got a field goal yep. um, at the end of the half. That's really what got their offense going for the second half. They really opened up the playbook on that drive. So it was just a great game. And it ended that last thing right before overtime is exactly what we wanted to see. Exactly. Yeah. And then the, the infamous coin toss yep. by Shanahan. Do we want so, to do we want to talk about that now or do we I want guess to talk we'll, about that at the end? Yeah, we'll, we'll okay. have to wait on that. Yeah. Also, um Dre Greenlock going down in the middle of that on a non-contact injury trying to run yep. onto the field. Killer. Horrible. Killer for the defense. That backup linebacker. I think he I believe I saw a stat out there somewhere. I think he led up a 132 pass rating out of 157. Yeah, he had like two great. touchdowns scored on him. It was like he was like I think it was like nine for seven passes on him. It was like mm. It was rough. But and, if you're a 49ers fan, please don't like complain about that. Like obviously, that was not the only reason that, why they won. That is killer, no doubt about it. It's a hor it's horrible. Um, but the Chiefs had injuries. Yeah, um, when you have Joe Tooney, yeah, and, they had, like an All Pro guard out. Yeah, so like all don't. game, and Bosa was lining up on that side of the field. Yeah, all for game. the game. They, so and, and the and to the 49ers credit, exactly what we were saying. Like they were getting after Mahomes early. They were sacking yep. him. They were they were stopping the run game. It was like they had everything was going exactly all the, thing, the, all the things that we to. had mentioned in the last podcast that we were concerned about the, exactly the 49ers happened. not being able to do is yeah. what they did. Yeah, they Maybe. shut down big plays. They forced. Yeah, they doubled and tripled Kelsey. Mm -hmm. They forced like Sky Moore and everybody to yep. be getting open. For, like first half was a great defensive battle and it was really oh, yeah. it was kind of fun to watch. Trent McDuffie put himself on like, the national spotlight because like, he, he made first team all pro, but. He's a slot cornerback. Um, he's really, Which is a newer position. Yeah, it's a newer, so not many it's a newer position. Yeah. Um, you, you, if you're kind of like a slot corner, people are not going to catch your eyes as much. I mean, of course, like there's all the attention on Pat Mahomes and Travis Kelsey for good reason. So you don't really think about like Trent McDuffie. And he broadcasted himself onto like national spotlight with some of the plays that he was making this mm -hmm. game. Um, both defenses all over the place in the first half. The uh, 49ers were really aggressive up front, did a lot mm -hmm. of great work. They, their coverage downfield was fantastic. I mean, oh, yeah. Multiple times, Patrick was either getting sacked or he was running up through the middle of the pocket to get like one or two yards on a third yeah. down because no one was open. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously, the Dre Greenlaw injury was sucks. huge. Yeah. Um, and that's horrible to see just like on a no contact running onto the field. Um, I actually watched a really interesting video about like Achilles injuries. Yeah, Achilles injuries and mm -hmm. why like stuff like that happens. But that's not. not well, and podcast. then the whole thing is, is like my thing is like oh well if he doesn't go down it's like well guys like 
if he went down on a non-contact injury like that, that Achilles was going to pop. Like, yeah, it's like, well, he could have just gone down on a contact. Like, yeah, like that. If that thing was going to go that easily, like he wasn't making it through that game. No, like there was no shot. And even and even if he does, you're just playing the like the yeah, what kind of feel. You just kind of yeah. feel like Patrick finds a way, or he finds a way. Who knows? Like you just don't know if Drake Greenlaw is just going to play worse. Like you just yeah. don't, you don't know. Um, exactly. So it's not worth playing that game. Um, but it is going to be something that's like missing the Super Bowl where you're mm-hmm. like on that but again that's what people do when they're trying to like take take down like super oh of bowl. course yeah. like oh well the chiefs didn't really win the super bowl because yeah. Drake Greenlaw went down whatever um raj what did you think about the first half of this game i wanted to sleep <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a terrible first half i mean defensive battle nothing flashy yeah, yeah. I, I like the second half a lot better i think yeah. what would have been fun is i i was saying like it wouldn't have changed the result of the game had the chiefs scored on the pacheco fumble and the 49ers scored on the McCaffrey fumble, just yeah. each get seven points. It would have made the game 10 times more exciting. Oh, yeah. Really wouldn't have changed much in the game because you just take both fumbles for a touchdown. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it would just been more fun if at halftime instead of 10 3, it was 17 10. Yeah. It's like, oh, like, oh, oh this, cool. is a, this is a game. Yeah. 10 um, 3, you were like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, at but, some point, I thought the game was going to end 3 0. Yeah. I really, hey, there was a serious stretch of time I was worried it was going to be 3 0. Yeah. I think I wrote. <laughs> I wrote down in like my notes, it was like 49ers punt, then it was Chiefs punt again, and then it was Sneed getting this like 15 yard unnecessary roughness penalty. Oh, that was yeah, that was right that before was the bad, Juwan Jennings yeah. trick play. Yeah. Um yeah, it was no, it was 49ers off to a great start, CMC fumble. Chiefs start off with a punt. 49ers punt again. Chiefs punt again. Brock Purdy, uh great coverage by uh McDuffie, three zero. Then uh the Chiefs fumble, 49ers punt, Chiefs punt. And I was just like oh my god but anyway there's a long stretch in the game where there's a lot of punts and yeah i was in yeah. the same boat where i was like this game is gonna end like three nothing and it's yeah, gonna be miserable gonna be rough but, but i mean i was also sitting there like i've seen this before i was yeah. like oh you're telling me a team's up 10-0 against or t- up by 10 points against patrick mahomes yeah. i've seen it before i know the script guys yeah just yeah. you know the script and then we get into overtime and the, the coin flip decision happens and we'll talk about that but anyway uh 49ers get the ball to start they go down the field and get a field goal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that was, it was a really good drive by the 49ers. It's a great and they drive. just got just stalled. They got stalled out. And then Kansas City blitzes on uh, third and fourth. And who else but Trent McDuffie comes in, bats the ball down. 49ers got a 27 yard field goal. And that was like, at that point, you were like, oh no. Yeah. Or no, that was um, uh, earlier in the game. Then McDuffie no, was earlier in the game. It was Chris Jones. Chris Jones yeah. was coming up the middle. Um, that was what you're thinking of was at right before uh the end of okay. the game. Yeah. Um that's where uh, Oh yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah. yeah, that's where um Spagnolo sent McDuffie on third down, forced him to kick. This one was where Chris Jones was completely unblocked, <laughs> running directly at Brock Purdy, and Jennings couldn't get there in time, even though Ayuk was open in the back, but of course obviously he's not gonna get there because Chris Jones is mm-hmm. barreling down at him. So what I did want to talk about is there's a lot of talk about this game and everything. People forget on the 49ers started off with a third and 13 and they got bailed out by a holding call at the start overtime. Um, yeah. and, like, listen, it was a hold, um, but it was not egregious. Um, sorry. Yeah. The, the Guffey, it was a Jones play. I said, McCuffey get McCuff, McDuffie gets him there. Cause it was the, the yes. McDuffie got the holding call, yes. but people kind of forget that they're talking about the game, like the decision and we'll get into the decision and everything. But the 49ers nearly just went three and out to start because that ball gets that ball gets batted down on yeah. third and 13. So they're going to have to punt because they're deep in their zone. Yeah. And they get the holding call. And that completely changes the game because you have a huge McCaffrey play. Um, Kyle Juszczyk gets a huge catch from Brock yes. Purdy outside yeah. the pocket. And that's when the play breaks down. And yeah, so they, they really almost just gave the Chiefs like, yeah, just a field. They just need yeah. to get a field goal. So they were yeah. they were this close. And I think it's just kind of something that gets under overlooked in, in yeah. the Chiefs victory. Yeah. Um, anyway, 49ers get the field goal. Kansas City gets the ball. They have a fourth and one. They all need to do is get the stop here. I'm sorry. Like, Zesty walk Mahomes coming out yeah. onto the field before before we even get to that fourth down. There is no better player I have ever seen in my life than Patrick Mahomes with his zesty walk. Yeah. When he's walking out there and he's doing the the thing with his hand where he's like telling everybody to huddle up, whatever, that dude is unstoppable. With his I, hips like moving. With his bit. hips like shaking just a little bit as he's like trotting out there. Like that dude's undefeated. Zesty Walk Mahomes will beat any player on the planet. Yep. Like in football. Like it's, Th- it's there's Mass LeBron. There's yes. 
There's, there's all these. There's other like players. head down game Brady. six clay. There's game six clay. There's like Jersey bite Kobe. Yep. There's flu game Jordan, and then there's Zesty Walk Mahomes. Yes, but the problem is Zesty Walk Mahomes every single game. When every single out. game, <laughs> it's ridiculous. But yeah, he gets to the fourth and one, and then they run their first. I they had a, I think they had a QB run earlier in the game, but they never run QB run runs because we talked about this he got injured on a qb run yeah he does a read option and gets like 10 yards and oh yeah as soon as that play was over kansas city rolled right to the end zone mm-hmm. yeah it was the, like there was the second that i saw mahomes like because it was it was basically a triple option that they were running mm-hmm. and no one even picked up mahomes yep. for like 10 yards which was, which is very interesting yeah. because something i took away from the game is kansas city is horrible in short yard situations yeah actually dreadful yeah because they don't. They don't run their QB, and they're running their. They got stopped on multiple. And yeah. I have it in like my notes. They got stopped on multiple like third and one attempts. Yeah. Where I was just like, they can't do these. They can't do these. The only reason they're in the fourth and one situation is because they ran the ball with Pacheco on third and one, mm-hmm. didn't get it, and then they had to go in fourth yeah. and one and almost lost the game. Which there. granted, some of those spots were a little bit. A little, yeah. Those yeah, were a little strange. bit. Like, did they? There were some of them. that's like they obviously they didn't get it, but they were still like a yard back mm-hmm. from like where the person clearly got to. It was just very odd. But anyway, yeah. yeah. Then, so then after Mahomes converts that, there's another third and six at Kansas City yeah. 45. And the reason I'm mentioning this third and six at Kansas City 45 is this has a lot of impact on the decision you make to uh, for the coin flip because had Kansas City stalled out there, had Kansas City got three or four yards, you have the debate if you try to kick the field goal yeah. and just keep the game alive because um, you're f- so far back. Um, anyway, you have another third and one situation here. Mahomes runs right like through again yards for or 20 something. yards. You pass it to Kelsey, and then the next play, a couple yard pass to McCole Hardman, who wasn't dog. even on the yeah, yeah it's corn, the corn dog. dog with a little mustard on top. Yeah, um, for, a couple yard pass to McCole Hardman, game over. And it's so funny because you can just see McCole like he completely won. blacked out. Yeah. He had no idea what was happening. And I think something that's going to be really underrated is uh, you're going to hear it probably in the Holmes documentary eventually. Is Jim Nance's call is so underrated in that where he goes Kansas City jackpot. Like that's and, and so it, good. And you look at the, in Vegas. Come on. Yeah, I need to watch all the mic'd moments, but they're coming out, and I just need to watch them all like straight. But you can hear Mahomes. He's running to McColl, who doesn't even really recognize that they won. Yeah. Listen, they, they knew because the Kansas City Chiefs were prepared, but um, who's like kind of like blacked out right now? He's <laughs> yelling, "We're world champions!" And he like, goes in to hug the guy, and dude, like, <sighs> just chills like. Or or the or during the whole play, like Kelsey runs like the the decoy route and looks up yeah, at the, the jumbotron. He says it on New Heights. He's it's like, the craziest thing I have ever seen, dude. Because Kelsey just goes, the cornerback. I knew the cornerback latched onto me, and I knew McColl would be open, and yeah. I just had to keep running straight and look up. And he's like, I saw McColl catch that ball, and I was yeah. like. We won the Super Bowl. And like, it's like, that's insane. And it was almost funny because in the moment watching it, it was like no one kind of knew what to do because they were like, the Chiefs just walked it off. Like usually you see like people kneel the ball out, the Gatorade bath. There yeah. wasn't time for that. They just won the game. It was yeah. over. Yeah. And it was so awesome and so exciting yeah, to see. It was, yeah, that was, that was nuts. Usually, How did everyone know the Gatorade was purple? Uh, somebody had to have leaked that. For anybody that wasn't betting on the game, Right before the game starts, you could uh, you could bet on what color the Gatorade bath is going to be for Andy Reid, and all of them were pretty even. Like there was like a lot of them were like at plus odds, like whatever. And then like right before the game starts, purple shoots up to like minus two hundred. Like somebody made the yeah, Gatorade someone, and leaked it. Someone knew, and there was no Gatorade bath. Oh, that's the official thing. That, that was the even though later on he was yeah. he was doused in purple. Gatorade. Yeah, I think they're saying that they. Like there was no Gatorade bath until like later in the game. Like way, okay, well so it was yeah. like past the point of yeah. where they went. If anybody watching this bet on the Gatorade bath, and you've got a great, uh, like a good inside, like you bet the game, you know what the result was. Let me know. But I, I think the bets were cashed as no Gatorade bath. Yeah, I think it was usually happens. So yeah. again, it was a weird situation where it was won weird. Forty like, Forty Niners probably didn't even know that she has won the game. I mean, let's be honest here. They had no um, idea what was going on. Yeah, and and that. So, um, any other takeaways from the game? I mean. <sighs> Look, Mahomes is that guy. Yeah, stopped doubting them. Chiefs are a dynasty. The 49ers, this was kind of their year to do it. They had everybody there. I know Drake or Greenlaw went out. I know Hafunga was also out. But like injuries happen. Like you got to be able to win that game. Yep. And like you, it was right there. You had it. And you just gave Mahomes the ball one too many times. Yep, you did. And that's. The story of it, I felt. I think I told you after the game. The, the Chiefs are a dynasty, and like that's, that's oh, already yeah. set in stone. 
when you play dynasties, you kind of feel like you can play your best game and you still lose. And it, like that moment felt like I looked at the Fortnite, I was like, you couldn't really do much better. You know, the defense there plays good a for a lot, lot of the games, but yeah. at the end of the day, you're giving the ball to like the best athlete we've seen in a long time. And you kind of just like, if he takes it home, he takes it home. You can't do anything about it. It's like yeah. playing LeBron James in the 2016 NBA finals where he has back to back 40 point games in game six and seven. You're just like, there's we nothing. can't stop him because he's so much better than everyone else. And that's what it felt like the 49ers couldn't beat the Chiefs just yeah. because they didn't have that guy mm-hmm. playing quarterback. And there's no other Patrick Mahomes. Um, it was just kind of like you had to just be like kind of put Chief, your hands up like, damn, the Chiefs are a dynasty. We couldn't do anything about it. Yeah. And and that's kind of how I felt about the game. Um, Raj, what did you think? I'm just glad the 49ers lost. <laughs> That's all I care about. After all that talk about not wanting to see the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, you're just like, the 49ers lost. It's good That's with all me. that matters. Personally, I just didn't. I mean, this was a nightmare blunt rotation matchup for me. <laughs> I could have cared less who won, but the 49ers were the worst of the two evils. You mean the... Or the yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah, were the worst of the two yeah. evils. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just don't want to see Debo Samuel happy. Ever. <laughs> Um, well, they're certainly disgruntled because Ayuk's friend is saying he doesn't want to be on the team. I'm sure yeah. Debo's pissed yeah. off. Um, I want to give a big shout out to Brock Purdy. Um, I thought he played a really good football game. Obviously, he's not Patrick Mahomes. He's not. Yeah. He's not a top ten quarterback. Very clean game. Yeah, he's not yeah. a top ten quarterback in the league, but he did enough to win the football game. Yeah. Um, he got it to overtime. He did a lot on that drive at the end. Goody, of course, he's not Patrick Mahomes. And so when you're mm-hmm. like, well, he could have like could have tried to evade pressure or whatever, or made this one throw better. Yeah, but he played a really good game. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, you can't say anything about it. Um, was Christian it, was it enough for him to get a contract extension, or they're just going to keep running with the? We're no, just well, well, he's someone. not up for a contract extension yet, because mm-hmm. um, this is going. He's going into Three. his third year, he two more um, so he has two more. They can offer, I think, at the end of his third year, they mm-hmm. can offer him another contract. What's, um, what's going to be interesting is when Brock Purdy does get his contract uh, like, extension up. Like? What does it look like? Because some teams might be willing to overpay, yes, but. Every, all the owners are going to collectively agree, like kind of what they did with Lamar because of his injury they're history and his running. Him. They're kind of going to blackball him a little bit, and they're going to be like, no. well, are we going to give the seventh, like the last pick in the draft a lot of money? Yeah. Um, and you're probably going to see him come back on a cheaper deal that he's that's worth it because the owner's going to be like, well, if you guys drafted this guy the last pick in the draft, maybe we can go find a fifth-round quarterback that looks similar. I think Brock Purdy's going to set a trend potentially for people getting late just round getting quarterbacks late, who like just solid quarterbacks that can run a system. Yeah. And I mean, Brock Purdy is very talented. He's really mobile out of the pocket. Yep. He makes some really goofy throws. So if you start trying to find a guy who's an experienced college vet, who's got a little like wiggle to him, um, maybe you go try to get him on your team versus dare I say a Sam his. Howell. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I think it's what dare this contract say look like. Phil Trakonovich. Phil is not going to be fl- he can't even flip burgers at Wendy's right. dude he's going right to McDonald's yeah. right. so I think Brock Purdy you say he did enough to win the Super Bowl he's obviously a quarterback that can win a Super Bowl um, they were nearly they were a missed field goal away from the Super Bowl when, or missed extra point missed extra point yeah, yeah. Um, we didn't even talk about that, that was, um, yeah that was well I did I did put it in my notes we can talk about it the Kansas City Chiefs had a huge special teams advantage before the oh game, my god and some crazy. people are saying that they got lucky with it uh, Tony Romo was super sharp on the call. He said it from like the moment the game started that Kansas City had a decisive special teams advantage. Mm-hmm. And that stayed true the entire way because Jake Moody, first of all, Jake Moody had a hell of a Super Bowl. I don't want to know care. I don't want anyone to say anything about the extra point yeah. miss because he hit a 55 yard field goal, which is the which longest the field goal the in Super Bowl history. Then he hit a 52 yard field goal. And those yeah. for Moody, Moody's a rookie kicker. He had a rough year. Yeah. Um, Hitting both of those in the Super Bowl and yeah. under the lights, like that's a huge job. And then he gets the one blocked, and he they say he like, oh, he kicked it. Which, low. Which, by the way, yeah, they, oh, well, he kicked it low. Well, maybe the left guard shouldn't have been backed up into the kicker. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> like so, Moody definitely kicked it low, but also like if the player doesn't get their hand up exactly at the time, or the guy they just block a like better, like Harrison get... Butker's fifty-seven yard that he hit was low. Yeah, like that was a low kick. Mm-hmm. And of course, but then all we're gonna remember is, oh, well, he hit the he had a the longest field goal in Super Bowl history that easily could have been blocked. Yeah. So like he played a great game and their special teams unit dropped the ball when uh, Kansas City punted and it bounced off the guy's leg. Yeah. It bounced off a guy's leg. Kind of just like weird. But then that's the whole thing of like situational awareness, yeah. knowing where the ball is. Because someone like, talked about it. The player was trying to block for Ray Ray McLeod, but Ray Ray wasn't going to bring the ball back so, so at matter. that point you have to clear out and he was just you got to, it just, that's was, a poison call yeah. that's like just get out of there yeah and it's like because like if he's not going to return it just let him 
catch it mm -hmm. and just get out of there so it doesn't hit you. And these are the things that we've talked about with every round where it's like the Chiefs of the championship team. They were clean on special teams. The, the 49ers were not. And it cost them huge because as soon as that uh, special teams mishap fumble happened, uh, Kansas City went down. Touchdown. Next play, MBS touchdown. Yeah. And they, they were leading. So um, that was a huge play. Um, of course, Mahomes down 10 just comes back like classic. Yeah. yeah. But let's do it. Let's talk about the Kyle Shanahan decision. Oh, boy. Um, so, of course, the decision was the new overtime rules were changed this past year. Um, or so two years ago, two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if and now each team gets a chance to score as traditionally, if you just go down, if you get the coin flip and you win it and you score a touchdown games over um, now, both teams get a chance to possess. So the question is, and this is only in the playoffs. Yeah. Only it's in the playoffs specifically for the playoffs. And so you like, there's a decision about if you receive the ball or if you uh, defer the ball, because if you score, if you go first, then the other team knows exactly what they need to do. If they score a touchdown, the other team knows they can go score a touchdown and whatnot. So it does spur the debate, and we'll talk about it. But essentially, the 49ers chose that they wanted to receive the ball and go first. Kansas City always wanted to get the ball second, no matter what. And that was the big debate was like, Kansas City got what they wanted no matter what. Yeah. Because they were always going to take the ball second. And so people think Kyle Shanahan made a bad decision. Yeah. What are our thoughts on the decision? So I'm a big proponent of I would rather have like my destiny in my hands and I would have like kicked it um, away, deferred it. Okay. Because it's like, think about it like this, like, you know that in these new overtime rules, if they score, you know what you need to do. Mm -hmm. I would rather have Patrick Mahomes go down the field and score and, and then know, that and then know what I need to do. Because just like the Chiefs did say, they said, if they take it first, we're just going to go for two afterwards. Mm -hmm. I'd rather put my fate in my t own team's hand on offense than have to go see what happens on our for like, you know, we get the ball, see what happens and then give the ball to Patrick Mahomes who can do anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's I, I, I think I agree with you on that one. Like, I think you definitely defer there and just like see what the other team does first. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a it's like a chess move of like letting the other guy go first to like show his hand essentially. And like, OK, well, let's we can then react and we can uh, work off of this um, because then like worse comes to worse. You give them the ball and it's like, OK, well, maybe they only score the field goal or if we're able to stop them, then we only need a field goal. Like yep. it, it completely changes the game plan and everything. So it's, yeah, I, it, it seemed very obvious that the second that the game went to overtime, the 49ers had no idea what they were doing. Yeah. No. Like when it came to offensively, it seemed like, okay, they could drive down the field and they can almost like try to score. Yes. But situationally, they were so lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like both from the top down, like, it, you know, deferring. Like, and then, like, the 49ers coming out later saying, like, yeah, we didn't really know what the rules were. Like, that's yep. insane. And so what I want to do is I want to separate what the players said and what Kyle Shanahan did. Because, mm -hmm. obviously, it's inexcusable for the players not to know what happened. Yeah. I don't know if that was a coaching thing. I'm sure Kyle knew what he was doing. Mm -hmm. um, he's the head coach of the football team. I'd sure hope he knew what he's doing. Um, maybe he just didn't feel the need to communicate it to the players. Yeah. Whatever. That's It's a bad decision, but I'm going to separate that. That's obviously bad. Um about Kyle Han Shanahan's decision. It is obvious to me that you've received the ball in that situation. Um, I think okay. statistics would back that up and whatnot, but I will defend Kyle Shanahan's de decision because it's completely what we're basing it off of is complete hindsight. Um, if the if the 49ers go down there and score a touchdown, the Chiefs now know they need to go score a touchdown. And the Chiefs had said they would go for two. So that puts a lot of pressure on the Chiefs that, because you do get four that downs, yes. But that means you have to get a touchdown and you have to get the two-point conversion. So if the Chiefs go for the two-point conversion and miss it, it's over. It's and game, by, yeah. and by going first, you put so much pressure on them to go for that. If they don't go for the two-point conversion, it's, it's both teams score a touchdown. The 49ers get the ball back. A field goal wins the game. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they were pretty much going on the mindset that they would get the ball twice, potentially, if they evened up their score. And the Chiefs would only get the ball once. And it almost worked out. And this is what bothers me about the hindsight because you're the, right. It did it was very close to actually working. Because the Chiefs would have kicked the field. Like everyone was like, you gave Patrick Mahomes four downs the entire time. You did not, because mm -hmm. the Chiefs would have kicked the field goal had they been like a 45 yard. If it was like fourth and seven and they had a 45 yard field goal, are you gonna take the chance that you're gonna convert a fourth and seven, or are you gonna just kick the field goal, tie the mm -hmm. game up, and then try to get a full defensive stop? 
yeah. I think you kick the field goal because fourth and sevens are hard to convert. Yeah. Um, but you at least start having the debate. So mm-hmm. this idea that people are like, oh, you gave him a home four, four downs and he knew exactly what he needed to do. No, because they could have kicked the field goal and tied the game up. I don't think they would have gone for the ball, would have gone for it on a fourth and eight, fourth and seven if they were in field goal range because they would have been like, okay. Then you got to try to stay alive. Though. Yeah, they, you need to stay alive because if you just miss that game's over, they won on a field goal. But if you kick the field goal, you can say, hey, our defense is really good. We stop them. We get the ball back again and we can kick our own field goal to win. So yeah. I think it's completely hindsight. Um, also, the 49ers did a great job of put asserting pressure early on with the game plan they had in place. It obviously fell apart at the end, but they got real. They marched right down on the Chiefs. Oh yeah, in overtime. Mm-hmm. They were really close to scoring a touchdown. They get they get a short field goal, um, and they almost stopped the Chiefs multiple times on that drive by having their defense go second. They had a fourth and one opportunity that they botched because yeah. well they didn't botch. But Magic Mahomes ran a read option they weren't expecting. They were on a third and six at the Kansas City forty five, and they converted a pass to Rasheed Rice. They had another third down and third and one when Mahomes ran for the first. Like they did a good job in that situation doing a great job on offense by going first mm-hmm. defensively they were ready and they just let up a touchdown at the end and it yeah it ends the game yeah. hindsight's like that but i think the idea here that like they had no idea or it was like a complete like wrong decision it's like it didn't work out but mm-hmm. if again if kansas city kicks the field goal 49 it's 3-3 49ers three, get the ball back mm-hmm. sudden death situation all they gotta do is kick a field goal and they win the super bowl mm-hmm. and then we would be sitting here like well going first paid off mm-hmm. so it's a complete hindsight decision um Obviously, I think analytics favor going second. And yeah. I think that's obvious. And the Chiefs were more prepared for that. Um, the inexcusable stuff is that Kyle Shanahan didn't have his team ready to know what they were doing. That was my mm-hmm. that was my whole thing. Like I yeah. can understand if if it's just a genuine like, look, this is the decision we're going to be making as a team. Fine. It, it really just didn't seem like anybody knew what was going yeah. on. And I give Kyle credit. You can see in the mic up. He just tells uh, Fred Warner. He's like, we want the ball. Like, that's, you just said that. And I was like, well, at least you're not like debating or having the debate. Yeah, like or whatever. Like you, you knew what you knew what you were doing mm-hmm. in that situation. Whether you want to debate if it's right or wrong, like he knew what he wanted to do. Um, and I think it goes first. First of all, Brock Purdy is like a young quarterback, like undrafted. Like also by having him go first, it's less pressure. It like, also gives the defense time to rest then yeah. against that. The because remember the Chiefs offense. just went down and marched down. The, their defense was yeah. just on the field, mm-hmm. so you can easily make an argument that well, our defense. And I know Shanahan didn't say it was because the defense was tired, but but like they probably were. They probably were. Like you give your defense a little bit of a break. You give your offense to go out there. You you are an offensive coordinator. You feel like going first. You can assert pressure. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe if they score the touchdown, they're like we're going for two. Yeah, screw right. it. Yeah. yeah, we're going for two. We're going to make Kansas City get eight. You don't know. Um, so I don't like all the like the back, like the back door. This was a terrible decision. Obviously, the Chiefs got what they wanted to, but mm-hmm. the Chiefs had to go down and execute, and they did. And the, the 49ers didn't execute at the level mm-hmm. the Chiefs did, and that's why they lost. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's what I think. Do we have any more thoughts on the Shanahan decision? I think no, that's all covered. I, I think that's yeah. a. I just think like I, I would I would be upset for Shanahan if this goes down as something that people are like wow he like dropped that, the ball that's the what lost him the super bowl that's that yeah. decision didn't lose him no. the Super Bowl. there's a lot people forget shanahan was the guy who went for it on fourth and three earlier in the game when they were in field goal range converted converted it. scored that's the what touchdown. Gets, yeah that's what they get the touchdown on yep. that's a four point swing right there you're not even in that spot without yeah that ballsy decision what, that was like there. the only catch george kittle had the entire yeah. game yep. <laughs> like, so that like that's that's a huge play there where it's like i don't i don't question kyle shanahan in that situation um it didn't work out it be like that. I question why the team didn't yeah, know though. that. That's very suspect. I don't like. Yeah. I don't quite know where they, why they didn't know why what there was wasn't a on. communication between everybody. Yeah. Like, and I think that's that. something in exit interviews he's going to have to talk about. Yeah. Um, like maybe they did it today. I know uh, Steve Wilkes just got fired, but like maybe they, they talked about it. Why the team wasn't prepared? I'm guessing Kyle was just like, oh, I'm not going to let them worry about it. Like I'll just tell, make the decisions. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, the Chiefs knew exactly what they were going to do, but again. Different caliber here. Championship, been there before. Prepared. They said they were preparing for it since September. Yep. Mm-hmm. That looked like they even said like, if we're ever in the playoffs, this is the scenario, and they just practiced yep. it. And I give them a lot of credit because that's what championship teams yeah. do. Yep. Um, Chiefs dynasty. Patrick Mahomes goat yep. conversation. I don't feel like I have a lot to say on this. Like he's like obviously the Chiefs top, are a dynasty. Yeah. And in my opinion, Mahomes is the second best quarterback yeah. of all time. You can make an argument for top three. Yeah. I think a lot of people are trying to make like segments of it and stuff, and it's very obvious. Like Mahomes is one of the best who ever did it. He's 28 years old. Yeah, he, what the Chiefs he's, are? He's had six years as a starter, mm-hmm. six straight AFC championships, four Super Bowl appearances, three rings, three MVPs, three MVPs. Yeah. and his stats along the way are incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he um, has he has one of the greatest single seasons of all time, which was his second season ever, yep. which was 50 touchdowns, 5,000 passing yards. 
like the dude's crazy the chiefs dynasty and they're not going to go anywhere they they have some people up for contracts but like one of sneed or chris jones is going to come back with the cap space mm-hmm. maybe you get them both back maybe you lose one we'll see but that team is young man mm-hmm. nick bolton is young trio Schnell is young george Karloft is trent mcduffie um i think genuinely i think that the tyree kill trade is going to go down as probably the thing that cemented this dynasty because trading Tyree Hill and then investing in the defense mm. and building an, a well-rounded like Super Bowl caliber team is that's going to go down it, as what made them that that's going to go down as what made them the yeah dynasty. I think people are starting to realize it now they pretty much said Patrick Mahomes they gave him a ton of money and Brett Veach said Patrick we're giving you this money because we don't need to pay for your offensive pieces anymore because you can because you can make them better you can make it work what we're going to do is pay the defense because we know if we're going to win multiple Super Bowls, this mm-hmm. defense cannot be what it was when we won the first Super Bowl yes. against the 49ers. Like we need to have a better defense. They trade away. Um, Probably one of the best receivers they, in the league. They trade away, if like, not yeah. the best. And he's at been the time. better yeah. since leaving the Chiefs. Like he's, he's been, been better. absolutely fantastic. And they said, Patrick, like you got to figure it out on the offense. You got Travis Kelsey, one of the best tight ends. Figure it out. Andy Reid, offensive coach. But where we're lacking is a defense. And Patrick Mahomes has picked up that slack. They've mm-hmm. been going ever since. There's no signs of it stopping. Like if you look at the Chiefs offense real quick, Rasheed Rice, first year receiver, probably yeah. makes a jump to at least a solid wide receiver tune, maybe a one yeah. next year. Travis Kelsey is coming back. Mm-hmm. Um, even M- MVS played good in spots this year. Yep. Watson's played good in spots this year. Like mm-hmm. their receiving core, if everyone said it was bad this year, it's gonna be better next year. So mm-hmm. It's only um, gonna get better. Pacheco is still gonna be the running back for the team. He's Pacheco really good. St- even though he didn't have a great Super Bowl, that during the playoff run, he was unstoppable. He was a ten, yeah. he was a ten, top ten running back all year. <laughs> he so was ridiculous. Going into the year, their offensive line is going to take some reworking a little bit. They, but, but they still have Joe Tooney, All Pro, Creed Humphrey, All Pro. He's not going anywhere. Um, I don't know who their other guard is, and but he's pretty solid. And their, t- their, and their tackles are a bit suspect. But they just won the Super Bowl with those tackles, and they might get better. But yeah. the, and then that's the issue is that <laughs> we were joking about yeah. this that we were saying it's like oh yeah now. This was like the one year that the Chiefs were like going to be on a down year. Now they're going to go draft some third round tackle, and he's going to be an All Pro in two years. <laughs> so, and then I, now they're going to have the, a tackle for ten years. The funny, the funny thing about the Chiefs is last year I felt like when they beat the Eagles was their down year because they, it was the first year without Tyreek. Um, Trent McDuffie was a rookie, yeah, and they won the Super Bowl. And then this year they were actually playing like it was a down year because last year they yeah. were playing like it was down year mm-hmm. despite having less talent. This year they were better, and this is what I kept saying when I was predicting the Chiefs. I was like. They are better this year than they were last year. They're just playing worse. Yeah. But their roster is better. And they came through and won. And so then, it's like, yeah. but they're still, their defense is still quite young. Their offense is probably going to get better by virtue of Rasheed Rice. Um, I don't think Travis Kelsey is going to regress that much. Patrick Mahomes ain't going anywhere. Well, and the whole thing is that I think they're trying to restructure Mahomes' contract to free up more space because yeah. mm-hmm. they, they have an opportunity. They, if they can find a way to do this, they might be able to get Sneed Jones back and then sign a receiver and what yeah. they and they're gonna when they do that kind of stuff or get a tackle or whatever they want to do it's because they're gonna go for this three peat that's never been done before because they're gonna just push their chips into the table we're gonna, they're gonna say we, we're gonna do something no one's ever done before yeah so ton of credit to brett beach over there oh my god done a hell of a job um it's, it's exciting to watch i think it's it's annoying sometimes when uh, sports have dynasties but it's really like unique to see it through like i found myself rooting for the chiefs more and more because of my predictions but also because like you're watching history you're watching yeah these you're watching occur. greatness like, like i feel like when you, you talk to your parents and friends and they're like oh you should have seen like the buffalo bills when they went to four straight super bowls or you should have seen um you hear we're, we're in pittsburgh obviously you hear people talk yeah. about the bradshaw era mm-hmm. of steelers mm-hmm. football like you just had to be there and, mm-hmm. and everything like that and it's like we're watching we're that. watching it where we're like gonna be telling like our kids like you, you should have seen, seen Mahomes, the Chiefs man. and the Mahomes. Like that's just, that was crazy. That's the best player I've ever seen do it. Yeah. So I think it's really exciting to watch. Also, the Chiefs just extended Steve Spagnuolo as their DC. Yep. <laughs> like we're screwed like we're so toast man yeah. uh, the league is over like spags isn't going anywhere and i see everybody in the comments that's like it just out themselves as like they just started watching football like why hasn't he been considered for a head coach it's like he did he sucked yeah he's dc through and through that's who he is yep. also by the way i think he goes down as probably one of if not the greatest defensive coordinator of all time at yeah. this point. if he gets one more yes because he has he has four rings and he won one with the Giants, beating the greatest team ever assembled yep. in, in the Super Bowl. And then three with the Kansas City Chiefs, cementing a dynasty. And the defense only got better every single year that he was there. 
Yep, and it's a testament to Andy Reid again for the staff building and Brett Veach and people who have like they've stuck this God. team together and people Matt Nagy had a horrible run <laughs> at like offensive coordinator and head coach and all that stuff for the, Bears. for the Bears. And they brought him back because he knew the system and he was an Andy Reid guy through and through. Eric Bieniemy leaves. Yeah. That's part of the question. There and then was, Bieniemy might be coming back. There's people yeah. talking about this year if the reason the Chiefs offense wasn't good was because Bieniemy was over in, in Washington. Yeah. And Matt Nagy won the Super Bowl with them. It's yeah. like, it's the testament to building but, the team. And, and during the Super Bowl weekend, Bienemy came in the building. Like yes. he might come back. Yeah. as like an advisor or something, oh, which is boy. insanity. Yep. Like, and so <laughs> this team is only going to get better. Yep. And so we'll talk about where the 49ers go. They'll be okay. They're going to lose some guys. They're yeah. still going to be the class of the NFC. I know people are upset about the odds for winning the Super Bowl next year. On paper, objectively, they are the best. Team and I want to, and still. but also the reason the odds that are people need to understand betting odds. The, the 49ers don't have a rival in the NFC. So the, therefore, the AFC yeah. is stacked. The yeah. Chiefs were just underdogs yeah. in two of their playoff games. Mm -hmm. And Joe Burrow is coming back next year. The Chargers have Jim Harbaugh now, and they're into the division. You think Bro, the did you say that you were going to hammer the under on the Chargers? Oh, I'm, all, I'm, I'm out on the Chargers. But, <laughs> but, but Vegas is in on the Chargers. Oh, oh the I odds. see. I yes. see. I see. Okay. So there's a lot of better teams in the AFC. So the Chiefs are always going to have a harder path. Do I think the Chiefs are going to go back to the Super Bowl? Yeah. But doesn't that their path is going to be a lot harder than the 49ers is going to be in the NFC? I don't think the I think the 49ers are going to have a step back. I think this is going to like mentally wreck them. A little bit. I think the Chiefs are going to break teams. I yeah. think they broke the Eagles. Uh -huh. it, it was just a delayed response with that like ten, that ten and one, and then they just fell off the cliff. The 49ers are it seems like they're in shambles yeah. right now. But like, if you're if you're upset about the odds and people have been out there, it's disrespectful to the Chiefs. No, it's not. Like it's a basic objectively, like, it's a harder it's a longer shot for the Chiefs to make it. Not because they're not good, but because it is a harder road to get there. Yes, the also, 40, if you want to bet on it, that means more money for you. Yeah, yeah that's so. true. The 49ers don't have a challenger. Like they beat the out of the Cowboys <laughs> yeah. every year. They beat the out of the Eagles this, this past year. year. Like the, who else is gonna like, they, the only team that gave them a little bit of trouble the was the Lions. Packers and, and, and the Detroit, Lions. And Detroit gave them some yeah. trouble, but like they still won those games and everything like that. So it's just like, yeah, it would be good if you know the Forty if the Packers and the Lions didn't shoot themselves in the foot. Yeah, but that's what happened. Yeah, and they're and they're still going to be a good team. So we'll talk a little bit more what they need to do in the offseason videos. Yeah, but, we'll um, get to those. The Forty Nine ers will be good. Congrats to the Forty Nine ers. They had a great yes run. We've great done, run. You're going to done a ton of time on on this game. Yeah. Um, so we might not get through our whole list, but that's okay. But I did want to talk about the halftime show. Oh my god! Uh, <laughs> Usher did the halftime show, and I felt like there was a lot of people on the media really fond of this show. I don't know what your reaction was to the media. Uh, but it was, a, I think, a lot of people loved this show. Maybe for a, a little bit of nostalgia, yeah. And, and all millennials that. Millennials were going crazy. Millennials were going crazy. Uh, yeah, I think all the women loved him taking his shirt yeah. off. I saw a reaction from a gay bar, which was the funniest thing I've ever <laughs> oh, seen I'm in my sure life. It was so funny. Going yeah. ballistic. It was so good. <laughs> Um, my disclaimer before we talk about the show is I think we all acknowledge the Super Bowl halftime show is a very hard thing to execute. Oh, yeah. Um, it's a hard set. You're do, you're in there for 15 minutes at most. Yeah. Um, you have to like roll your set onto the field. You're, get, you're like you you got to do a, like so many numbers of songs. You're trying to promote your brand um, and everything. Like that. It's not an easy task by any means. And no. I think the last couple of Super Bowl shows have not been what they used to be. And I think it's evident because there's more restrictions on what you can do. Yeah. And all that type of stuff. So I'm not hating on Usher or any other past Super Bowl performers, because I enjoy the shows. You're so racist. Less. I know. I am racist. Like, I said it here. Like, like the Usher Halftime Here it show. is. Here it is. Um, <laughs> what was that, Gruden? <laughs> I will say first, before I get into it, and we, we ranked, we did a tier list a couple uh, last oh, yeah, year. Yeah, we did. Yeah. On all the halftime shows, so I might try to repost those on our story. Um, So I do think a lot about this. I watched the show and took notes on it before it came back, because I did not like the show. But... No, I that's it. I, I wanted <laughs> to know what you guys it. thought about the show. I mean, I thought it was very reflective of the Super Bowl, as I was kind of saying, that uh, it was not that great in the beginning, but really picked up at the end. Like the end really kind of sold the show. I was like, all right, this is a good like this is a good like halftime show. Yeah, I mean, it started out pretty slow. And then we it was had just to, yeah, it was just slow. Alicia Keys's voice cracked that the NFL that was, edited it out. Yeah, the, that's such a good point that uh, now they're trying to what is it the Mandela, Mandela effect? effect. Yeah. yeah, 
we're really about to get we're witnessing a Mandela effect in real time yeah. at the NFL. But it's crazy. You know, we jump to Alicia Keys, then we have a Zempic CeeLo Green say bounce. <laughs> yeah, that was so I good. really thought that was CeeLo Green. Well, I so really did too. What you're saying here is what actually like frustrated me about the show. So I took a lot of notes. I won't go through them all because we're already so many long into this show, but I thought the opening song choice was super weird. Yeah. Um, I understand yeah. like if like I think a lot of people probably liked it because a lot of people in sports media right now are in their mid 40s 50 years old yeah and it's more of their like childhood your young years um i know my way was extremely popular for usher but as a whole when you think of everyone i thought it was a weird song to start your show with. not a bad song to have in the list not at all just not an opener yeah mm-hmm. so i thought that was weird and it was small spectacle because on the field there were fans kind of like boxing them into at some, one like, point it was like it looked like there was like 10 people like in the performance yeah it, it, it was, was like what I thought it was strange and just not indicative of like some of the songs we had talked about before. We're guessing what the first song would be. Oh my God, yeah, DJ got us falling in love. Like yeah. these songs that maybe like would kind of everyone would know and recognize mm-hmm. be the first song, and then they took my way, um, which I thought was weird. I didn't even know the second song. They were still on the field at that point, and these. I'm not like a music snub or anything, but like I feel like I should at least have heard the song before. Like oh, I recognize that. Like this is supposed like, to be like. Don't get me wrong. Good song. But play the hits. Yeah, I'm, I'm play I'm, the hits. I'm 22 years old. Like I feel like I should hear. The, <laughs> yeah, like, should have heard of some of this. I should have at least heard of like. Yeah. I think he played like 13 mm-hmm. songs. I should have at least heard of some of Usher's 13 songs that he yeah. played it before. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they moved up onto the stage, which I thought was really good. Once because, they got on the stage, yes, it was a lot better. Because I say a lot of times, like what I want to see for a Super Bowl show is I want to see the people sing. I want to mm-hmm. see a big set with yeah. a lot of dancing. Um, and I want it to be like high energy and like yeah. and stuff like that. And when they were on the field, I was like, this is so low energy. Um, yeah. He's barely singing. And then they got into the stage and I was like, that's great. And the marching band was going and they were playing Jackson Love in the State marching band. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're playing. Oh, was it wasn't Jackson State. Yeah. Well, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, that's Jackson awesome. State. That's yeah. awesome. Um, and then they played Love in this club, like on stage with the marching band. And that I was, was really that good. Was, I was, he didn't sing a lot during that. And it was yeah. Short. Which was odd. But, <laughs> it was short. Yeah, but, I was, but I was there. I was like, yes. Like, we're back. Great. Yep. I knew Love in this club, everything. And then Alicia Key showed up, and I was yeah. like, "This is super fun!" Like yeah. she's singing, like people. <laughs> her and Usher were harmonizing. I was like, "This is yeah. dope." Then like, Usher was like, "It started when we were on her a little bit." Then, then, was... Yep. So after this, <laughs> Swiss like, Beats is a better man than me. <laughs> <laughs> and then so after her and Usher start dancing with each other, and he was touching her, and that's when I was like, "Okay, I'm kind of doing out of this. so good." Like <laughs> this club, like Alicia Keys and him were doing this harmonizing duet thing. I was like, "That was really cool." The touching was weird confessions came on and they like hard cutted from alicia keys to write to confessions and i was like holy tempo change yeah. i was like that's not how you switch songs yeah um i don't know if you need to like just black out the whole set and do a hard yeah. cut or if you need to like choose a different song but i was like that was weird um burn came on and they had the fires in the stage that was I, good yeah i thought burn was sick i was like he was singing it it was a good tempo switch for, come, from her confessions. I was totally back in on. Yes, it was like, uh, okay, I was like, okay, no, Alicia back. Keys touching like confessions and a little shaky. We're back. Um, then Usher took off his clothes. Yeah, yeah right? he was stripping, man. Yeah, then, let's not forget Lil John in the crowd. Just <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and I was everybody that, shots. No, so that, that was late. That was a little bit. That later. was a little bit later. <laughs> yeah, um, and I'll get into that. Um, <laughs> Usher takes off his clothes, and I just thought it was weird. And then he was doing this weird dance with "You Got It Bad." And you got it bad as a good song, and he was just like, like I. So my thing is just like he d- was doing that like kind of like partial robot kind of like breakdance yeah, thing. Mm-hmm. So that was from one of his older oh, songs. Okay. Yeah. It's from one of his music videos. Which, if you don't know that, very odd yeah. kind of scene that come out of nowhere. But like it was like a reference to that. But also, why are we just stripping? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like I don't know why he took off his clothes. He, first of all, like, he was dripping. He was, he was so soaked. Oh, yeah. soaked. He is up there as like one of the wettest dudes out there yeah. like holy <laughs> god <laughs> playing what, what do you what do you want me to do i think you're sweating more than the players literally like he was, he was soaked yeah it was soaked from minute one to <laughs> it's like he got out there and it was just dripping and sweat it's like dude were you did you in run a sauna a, did you run a triathlon before this you like, know, what's happening? hasn't been doing a performance like this in a dude minute. oh my god um so then He's doing this d- dancing singing. He's barely, he's barely singing at this point because he's out of breath. Yeah, <laughs> and so the guitar solo comes in, and the guitar, cool, the guitar solo is cool. I don't even think she was playing the guitar. Okay, yeah. yeah. A, a, a lot of people, what a lot of people are saying was, a can she play guitar? Absolutely, she's a great guitarist. Yeah. Was she playing guitar that no. moment? Absolutely not. I, I, <laughs> there I, was I, no I, way I, she I, was I didn't notice it, it, but I like the guitar solo. Um, dude, her hand was off of the guitar when a so, note hit. That's it's so like, dude, like that's not happening. Um, 
So then the roller skating comes out, and I was like, oh, okay, I like the big sets. Yeah. Scales or something. This is sick. Like, they're doing something like. Because now that's going to be like, okay, that's a memorable yep. thing. That's going to be funny, at least. Yep. Like, okay, yeah. But we then got they, it. like, went from bad girl to oh my God. And I thought that was super strange, like, transition. Yeah. What I am comes out. And they're doing yeah. some roller skating. He's barely singing. It is what it is. Oh my God's there. And then they do turn down for one. <laughs> and cut to little John in the crowd. <laughs> and I have no idea. Who like green lit? <laughs> He's this just standing idea. there. He's just in the crowd doing turn down for a while. And it's like yeah. also, can we just not the dude who was flying? Oh, in the, the back! Air? Oh my god, dude! There was so there's a dude in the background that goes 25 feet in the air and then just comes flying back down. <laughs> there's no shot they caught him. There's no chance they. Did. I just love seeing the um, like post about you know, yo. Did someone find out if he's good or not? Dude, that dude is dead. There is. It was no- also the girl who fell off the pole. Yeah, uh, <laughs> just the back. She just like, I, I was the watching the whole thing. Like, I think she dropped. They were all dropping on purpose, but, but she, she did not. Yeah, early. she went yeah. way too early and did not catch herself. No, but that other guy is dead. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they're sweeping it under the rug. Yeah. Um, but I thought turned down for was like repulsively bad. Like it was just like hard cut from Oh My God, which is like Usher's most one of his most famous songs. They've got the whole roller skating, and then it's just Little John in the crowd, like getting yeah. hyped. They're doing like it's like a, a pretty much turned down for what's like a club song. Yeah, and I was like, we're at a Super Bowl show, not the club. <laughs> yeah, um, like that's what you do at the Super Bowl after party, like yeah. not now. And then they went to yeah, and I thought that was good. There was a lot of yeah. dancing. Ludacris was yeah, great. Ludacris shows up with the biggest afro yeah. I've ever seen. Dude was trying to invoke so much nostalgia with that. Yeah, yeah Ludacris was. was I thought Ludacris was great. Besides the girl falling off the pole, <laughs> yeah. Usher still was not singing during yeah at all. Yeah, he wasn't singing. And he at had all. a break because Little John was doing turned down for what. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the worst part of it all to end it off on is they ended off just being like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like a mosh pit on stage. And I was like, what ending is this? <laughs> yeah. Like, it, like they ended. I was like, oh, I was, I was expecting like one more song or something. I'm like, what is going on? I was like, yeah. oh, it ended. Like, because that's just it. Saying on stage, say, and I am singing, just saying, yeah, yeah. Like looking all happy. Like they had done something good. Like, no, you didn't. It was not good. It was not like a show of a show biggest problems were there was no singing usher barely sang and you can tell because he's not talking to his mic yeah and they're playing the music over top of mm-hmm. it so like it's very noticeable um they didn't start with a bang and that was obnoxious and like the set list i thought was like kind of bad like, and usher has great songs mm-hmm. the i think it's criminal that dj fallen on like yeah DJ guys in love didn't make the show that was ridiculous i thought yeah. that was crazy there's some other songs they could have played but I don't know. That's my long breakdown of the halftime show. Um, <laughs> like I said, I'm just passionate about it. I'm like, very passionate about the halftime it's not, show. It's not an easy thing to do, but I feel like who was last year's? Uh, who How did was I forget? Rihanna. Oh, Rihanna. Oh, Rihanna. Right. Yeah. Um, she did a pretty good. Yeah, and like because well, what Rihanna did last year is talking about big sets. Is she had she had like a like, yeah the, the stage like floating, moving up and down like big yeah. sets very iconic songs. Everyone oh, knows yeah, Rihanna's yeah, yeah. hits. Um, she did a lot of it by herself. Um, mm-hmm. She sung for a lot of it. So like, yeah, all those things. Well, pregnant, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, and then the year before it was was like, the, the Dre, um, yeah. it was yeah. Dre Eminem and like, then all them before before that Shakira was Shakira and, and Jay Maroon Five. Yeah. 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 Oh, that Maroon Five one was rough. Yeah. So like that's just like my like I don't I enjoyed watching it. Of course, it wasn't like I needed to turn it off. Um, but I was kind of just like I feel like they could show this to an audience. Like you know how the movies they have people come in and watch it, yeah. Like to do like a pre-screen, pre-screen, like, yeah. What, like what issues do you have with this? I feel like if they just had like a pre-screen, pre-screen, or just showed a set list and played the music exactly yeah. how it was going to cut it's like, everything, I would have been like, if they just showed it to me. I would have been like, well, I don't know the second song. Where's DJ F- God has fallen in love? Yeah. And where is Justin? Where is Justin Bieber? And like, and if they just told me the set, I'd be like, why is Usher taking off his clothes? Yeah. And then like those small things. Hey, start I enjoyed my way. when he took his shirt off. <laughs> Pause. Pause. Uh, play. Um, what? <laughs> but yeah, that was that was my thoughts. Any uh, any final thoughts on the halftime show? I thought it was solid overall. I feel like it depends about on your age group too. It depends like, on age group. Too. Yeah. In love with and this, and that's the only thing that frustrates me is like I I know people don't want to do it. People always like Taylor Swift should do it. You have to like you don't get paid a lot for this. So you don't get paid. You have to yeah. pay for it. And, and it's all in, in hopes of endorsements. And Taylor Swift has no endorsements and no. She uh, has no nez- like. You're not going to get any of these like huge artists because like their tours make too much money. Their yeah. tours make too much money, and also it's like okay, it's a really like restrictive mm-hmm. thing. So it's like the only thing you can go out th- there and do is like do what you're already doing, but a little bit worse. And then worst case scenario is you completely bomb. 
Yep. Mm-hmm. So it's it's not a good look and it's not a good switch situation for them to succeed. So I'm not really hating on Usher. No. I'm just hating on Kanye. Pro- Kanye for the next one. Don't Kanye. please for the love of Kanye. God, Kanye. Not bring up Kanye. <laughs> oh, so get, bring up Kanye. Am I in am I did I just not see the ad with Kanye? No, I don't think not, we got it. Yeah, no, I don't think we got that. Was weird. Kanye. Yeah, there was there was a weird ass yeah. ad. By the yeah. way, the Duolingo ad that was that funny, one was though. funny though. <laughs> um, the the tem, the Timu Temu Timu ad. Yeah, yeah. Temu, Ooh, ads. Temu. Yeah, please, for the love of God, contact your parents. Do not let them get a Temu account. They're going to get scammed. Yeah, like please. Please reach out, guys. To guys, use my Temu link. I'm Shut only 287. Up, you rat. I'm 287 invites away from a free Nintendo Switch. Shut up, you rat. <laughs> anyway, moving off the halftime show, um, we're gonna grade. We're gonna end off here by grading teams' playoff performances. Um, all the playoff teams. So yeah. we're gonna go through and kind of talk about what we thought about what they did in the playoffs and how it ranks. So we'll start off in the AFC and talk about the Steelers who played the Bills in the first round and then lost by 14 points. Um, what grade do you give the Steelers for their playoff performance? I, I, I personally C went plus. with a B. I, I'll give C them a C plus. plus. Like, yeah. They made it to the playoffs and got smacked. By a like, team they were going to lose to. By a team they were going to lose to. And of course, it's like, I'm giving them a C because it was like it was an awful showing. But granted, like give them points because they really weren't even supposed to be there. Mm-hmm. So the fact that they even made it was good. But like they got so many issues yeah. to deal with, man. I gave them a B. They were within seven at one point. It never felt like they were going to win the game, but they were in within seven at one point. They were playing a team that no one thought they were going to win. Um, it was like a ten and a half point line. Like you get an A if you win, um, but you didn't win. So I just give them a B. Yeah. Um, Dolphins. Uh, C minus. Uh, yeah, that's okay. not a very good one. <laughs> I gave him a D. I yeah. I think I'm gonna agree with the D. I gave him I give him a C minus just because Tyreek Hill cashed me a bet. <laughs> Only fair. reason why. Such yeah. a good. Grade Although grade. you know what, I think I'll give him a C minus. Okay. I'll give him a little bit just because the weather was awful there. Okay. But that's that can't be enough of an excuse to really like make a difference. Because like, look, it's playoff football. Like you gotta yeah. you gotta handle some adversity there. But other than that, they just they look yeah. terrible. My D grade was because. It was a four and a, like you were always going to lose so you can't yeah. get the f because if you're expected to lose yeah but when it's a four and a half point line and you lost by 19 yeah something went wrong there yeah um, and, they, and they never were in that game no. so they didn't score after the first drive yeah browns um uh i'm giving him a flat c yeah that's no I, I was gonna go there because first half great second half i'll i'll give them a b minus because the fact that they even made the playoffs in the first place is ridiculous is with true. the amount of stuff that they had to go through. And, you know, that first half they were doing really well, but then they just, they just fell apart. Yeah. I said they lost. I, my reasoning for a C was they lost to a team that was they were better than. I think they were better than the Texans. Mm-hmm. It was a bad performance, but the line was small. Like, it was two yeah. and a half. You, you lost the game at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll see them again next year, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sean They'll, Watson. Oh, Jesus Christ. Texans. Hey, Texans! I'll give them a, hey. just a straight up A. Yep. Like, That's what I did yeah. well. Above expectations this well season, did very well. Yeah, you, you can't ask for anything better for a team that's supposed to be rebuilding. Yeah, it's supposed to be rebuilding. Found your coach, found your quarterback, found your guy that's going to anchor the defense. Not only made it to the playoffs, beat a playoff team. Yeah. Uh, kept it relatively close for the first half with uh, the best team in the league. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they were always going to if. Like a, the peak for this team this year was winning a playoff game. They won a playoff game, and yeah. they, and for what it's worked, they played the Ravens well for a half. Yeah, that's what that was my thing. Is like because now they're building a culture there. It's very obvious. Like they they couldn't have asked for a better season. Yep, hundred percent. Controversial here. The Bills. What grade are you giving them? C minus. I give them a flat C. Okay, I also give them a flat C. Reasons why. Uh, the C mine is just they would have gone to C if they didn't do the same thing every season. <laughs> <laughs> but they're getting the C minus because like you gotta understand situational football sometimes, especially when you're the Bills. I know Tyler Bass missed the kick, but you had plenty of opportunities to ice the Chiefs out that game and had plenty of opportunities to win that game. It's just a matter of figuring out what is going on with you your offense at that point. Like yeah. Diggs is done. I think Diggs is cooked now. Yeah, I mean, I give them just a flat C because like their expectations are Super Bowl or bust basically every year. And when you're getting bounced by the Chiefs in your own home, and that was like your one thing, it was like, oh, well, Mahomes has never been to Buffalo. Mahomes has never been to Buffalo. Mahomes has never been to Buffalo. And he just 
yep. yep. He outplays you. And uh, Josh Allen did have a great game that game. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to sound like I'm but, bagging on Josh Allen at all. But like, you don't want the game just to come down to your kicker having to make a field goal. Exactly. Like you have to play a better game. Yeah. Yep. Period. Um, reason for my C was they won a game. That's good. It's always good when you like yeah. you don't get bounced out in the first round early, unlike the Cowboys. Um, <laughs> you lose. You lost at home against a team that you were favored against. It wasn't like. Of course, you give them a little bit of grace because the Chiefs won the damn thing. Yeah. Um. But you lost at home against the team you were favored with. It comes with the caveat of this is the team that like it's a rival, like you had mentioned. It's the Mahomes has never been on the road, so like you don't get a lot of kudos for that. Like you're a Super Bowl or bust team. Um. But yeah. I, like they don't get like a D or anything because they did win the first game. And yeah. It wasn't like they got blown out by the Chiefs. No. At home. Um. But just expectation wise, like yeah. you gotta do. You gotta be better. They're going backwards. Yep. Yeah. Ravens. Oh boy! I uh, I'll just go first. I give him a D. D. D is a little bold. Well, it's for the playoffs. Great. I'm gonna give him. A I guess. Grade oh yeah. Not, yeah, yeah. I guess, I guess the season grades. The, the playoff yeah. grades. <sighs> like first half against the Texans, shaky. Got better. You know, shook it off. And then you did. You played well. Beat the Texans. Well, and then, I mean, they held the Chiefs to 17. That's, it that's the thing, though. I'm not. The defense played out their minds that game against the Chiefs. They're getting the D ranking just because of their offense just and their anything. terrible decisions. Yeah. <laughs> I I gave him a D because you were Super Bowl or bust. You were the first. You were the first seed. Um, you had the Chiefs in your house. You were four and a half point favorites in that game. Like everyone knew you were going to beat the Texans. Like come on. Um, so like that, that win doesn't get much clout for me. And then you went in and give made a lot of mistakes in that game against the chiefs like you kind of dropped the ball in that chiefs game um you were super bowl or bust you had the mvp like i can't say you got a c like a neutral score because i'll give him a c minus i think because at least my thing is that you know you i feel like you can't discredit the defense for holding the chiefs to 17 like that and also i think it does help them that the chiefs ended up winning the super bowl because i would agree you can hang your hat on the fact it's like look no one was stopping this team kind of thing um but except the 49ers for four quarters <laughs> we'll ignore that one but um yeah the, the team that the ravens blew out they couldn't whatever but um yeah i'll give them a c minus because like you know they got the job done against the texans it was just a little bit shaky defense played out of their minds against the chiefs it's just the offense just really couldn't get it going mm-hmm. Mah- or lamar was trying he was trying his best zay this is bad. on you bud <laughs> Stop hitting people. Blame by it the all way. on Zay Flowers. Trade him to the Giants. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he has much of a football career after his little incident. Oh yeah, yeah, he's got some off the field stuff. He does. It's gonna be interesting. Um, yeah. Let's say it all together. What grade are we giving the Chiefs this year? A plus. A plus. Yeah. Um, moving. On, they won the damn thing. Yeah. Whatever. Like, they won the dance. Yeah. Moving on. Uh, next tier. Uh, well, ne- next tier. Next, next conference. Tier. The NFC. We can all say it on three. What grade are we giving the Cowboys? One, One two, two, three. three. E. F. E. <laughs> e. <laughs> um, oh, it, e for eliminated. E for eliminated. Yeah, that's e good. for that's every good. year. <laughs> <laughs> this is so obvious. They were the two seed. They had a seven and a half line closed, and they were blown. <laughs> they were blown out at home by the Packers. Yeah, yep. it doesn't get much worse than that. Yeah, I mean, there's <laughs> yeah. not much else to say. Like, you got pantsed by Jordan Love. Like, that's that's all that happened. Yep. Yep. Eagles. F. I'll give him a D. I give him a D as well. I'll give him a D. Um, they were they were favorites, but like going into the ser- like the game, everyone was kind of like, no one really thought they were gonna win. Yeah, and it was like only reason they were favorites is because like, well, they have the talent, but like, are they gonna actually get their yeah. like, head out of their asses? Um, so like the Cowboys, we were all stunned. No one was yes. stunned when the Eagles lost. No. Everyone's like, I literally sat there, I'm like, here we go. Whatever. Yeah, but the Eagles, like, <laughs> yeah, here we go. <laughs> for them, like, they kind of gave up. That's a horrible look. Mm-hmm. Um, they weren't competitive in that game. Yeah. And if they had won it, I would feel yeah. differently. Like maybe give them a C for the postseason. But, but, D, yeah. but Listen, at least we see Jalen Hurts smiling as soon as Brian Johnson's gone. Yeah, that's always good. good. We like to see that. Um, Rams. I'll give B, them a B plus. I I'd wow. say B. Yeah, I'll give them a B. They played really. They played a great game against the the Lions, who ended up then making the NFC Championship mm-hmm. game. I mean. Like the fact again, like I, I am kind of putting in a little bit of like you know the fact that they, I'm putting in a little bit of the regular season, just the fact that they like you know made the Super Bowl, not made the Super Bowl, made the playoffs. But um, I'm kind of like weighing in there a little bit. But you know they got they got some great young talent on that team. Like I think they they all played very well. Um, so like I think you know you lose to the Lions at home to the Lions by three. It's like yeah. solid game, but just couldn't get it done. Yeah, that's why I went for the C because 
you feel like this team was a team that needed to like win a playoff game. Like they had the talent to win mm-hmm. a playoff game, but it was a great game against the Lions who made the NFC championship. It was a fun football game. Um, I think I'd probably give them an A if they win and play the next get round competitive. Mm-hmm. Um, but unfortunately, when you're a first round exit team, it's still like it's tough. Yeah. It's, and, and it's not like they were the Texans where they were just happy to be there. Like the Rams mm-hmm. were a good football team. Yeah. What do you give them again? Uh, B plus. Oh, wow. Solid okay. team. I mean, like it's good for like development for next season. Like, you know, you have these offensive <laughs> That's pieces a good point. now. Yeah. Like you saw this, like Detroit's been building for years now. Yeah. And this is like yeah. what the culmination of all that building is. To have your young offense with your rookie running back and your, or yep. yeah, rookie running back, your rookie wide receiver, playing like that, you have hope. Yeah, and Stafford yeah. still looks really good. Also, some young guys on defense too. Yeah. What is it? I think it's, I think it's Kobe Bryant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but he, um, he was a monster that mm-hmm. game too. Yeah. yeah, Bucks. Uh, solid. I'll give him a B minus. I'll give him a B plus. I gave him an A. You know what? Actually, could, now that I think about I'll, it, I'll still give him a B plus because they didn't really do that. I'll well give him a normal lines. B. That's fine. Yeah, I felt as if, like, kind of like Texans, they won a playoff game. Like, yeah. no one, I didn't. Mm-hmm. Teams didn't even know they would make the playoffs, and then they played the Lions close that next game, and they weren't oh. expected to do. Giving them an eighty nine point four. I'm not rounding it. Up. <laughs> okay. I won't round I like it up. It. <laughs> I mean, Bucks were solid this season. I I thought the Saints were winning the division though, yeah. for like most of the year. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you're the Bucks and you're in the playoffs, you're just happy to be there. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, you got Baker, who's playing pretty well during the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Like, they they got a friend. Like, they have a franchise guy now. Like, yeah. they absolutely do. They should absolutely hang on to him. You know, you uh, beat the Eagles. Keep Mike Evans, please. Yeah. <laughs> don't let him go to the Chiefs. Please don't. Um, but they, you know, they had like a the young roster. And, you know, you beat the Eagles, who everybody was like, kind of like, okay, well, you're the underdogs technically, but you should win this game. Um, or I guess, well, they were at home, I guess, during that game. Yeah, I don't the know. Eagles were still favored. The Eagles were still favored. But, you know, you go into Detroit, ended up not playing the best game ever. But, you know, like a lot, a lot of hope to look forward to in the future. Um, I think that division could be theirs for a little while now, yeah. I think. Packers. A. a. a yep. Straight up A. Just like, the exact same reason as the Texans. Yeah. Beat like, the crap out of the... You're the, happy to be in the playoffs. Yeah. You yeah. beat you won a first round game yep. and you played a competitive second you round. You nearly game. won yeah. that other game too. Yeah, nearly yeah. won against the 49ers. Packers um, have are feeling I think the Packers are feeling the second best like besides the Chiefs, I think the Packers have the best hope after the playoffs. Like they're the oh, yeah. with their performance. Yeah. Even better than the Niners, I think. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, one hundred thousand about where they're yeah. at. Because you have a franchise guy in Jordan Love. All of your receivers are really, really young. Um you got some uh key pieces on defense still. Um, you just kind of lock and load and keep going in the next year. Like you can have a really deep run yep. in the playoffs. Lions. A. a. Oh, okay. Are yeah. you kidding, dude? You cannot. It was their first playoff win since like JFK was assassinated. I know. You I can't know. Do that. I know. I'm giving them a B plus though, oh, and the really God. the biggest reason why is I think they had some favorable playoff matchups that leaned in their favor. When they got to play the Bucks in the second round. They were like they were they were big oat favorites in that game, so it kind of felt like they got to the NFC Championship game. They had it a little bit easy. I just don't can't give them an A because they were in the position. Like everyone knew going in that they were the best team, like the second, the third best team maybe. And then the Cowboys got bounced out, which helped them a lot. And so they were able to kind of get to the NFC Championship a little bit fraudulent because it's second seed, seed left. And then they were able to play the 49ers to a, a tight game, but. If you win the game, like they had the talent to go to the Super Bowl and they didn't get it done. I know it's like the narrative of like, well, the Lions have never been there before, but like on paper, that was a team that could have made the Super Bowl. And they were talented enough to do that. That's fair. I, but my thing is like, because of how young that team is, yeah, I think and that's fair. Like just because like they just are so inexperienced in the playoffs, I feel like, and also Dan Campbell has to learn as a coach, like there's so don't hit on 20. <laughs> don't <laughs> stop hitting on 20, please. For the love of God. But um, I think it was an A. I think you have to look at that season and say, look, like as much as it sucks that we like blew that lead at the end there, like we won our first playoff game, or I guess what second playoff game since JFK was assassinated. Sorry about that. Um, and then they go in and they beat the Bucks at home again, and they take the 49ers like to a full game essentially. Like even though they were the reason for that collapse, like you still have to look at that season and be like, this was an, like if you were to like look on paper and to and hand to a Detroit Lions fan and say, you're going to go to the NFC championship game and you're going to lose like what? 31, yeah. 30 something mm-hmm. to the 49ers. They're like, I'll sign up for that any day of the week. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a good season. Um, 
for sure. Not really good season. We're talking about playoffs, but it was a good yeah. playoff run for them. Yeah. Um, I just think when I look at like the fact that the Cowboys were out there, it felt like, all right, now you guys you got over a big hurdle. You didn't have to play the Cowboys in the second round. Like, yeah, go do something with that. And they didn't mm-hmm. quite get there, but mm-hmm. not bad at all. Yeah. Anything on the Lions, Raj? Uh, I mean, honestly, solid season. No one expected them to make it this far. Yeah. Which is why, like, whoa. And I then feel just like everyone, in- the Lions were the most popular bet in the, the well, preseason. Really? Pre- everyone was so high in the Lions preseason. Yeah. Well, realistically, sitting well, there. now, now I feel like it's we're also looking at hindsight. Of, like, true, of course, yeah. but like it's the Lions. They could yeah. have just lost yeah, like right that's before. Fair, that's like, fair. But still, yeah, you know, you're looking at this team and you're like, wow, they made it really far. They made a deep run. They're showing great signs, yeah. great sparks. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they're going to run the A. I mean, you would think they'd run the NFC North next season. But, but uh, now the no, Packers, Packers are kind of back. back. Not not at all. I guess. Like, the Bears might get Caleb. We're going to talk about this another time. Well, but like, is, uh, that division is going to be a bloodbath. Yeah. <laughs> Justin Jefferson is oh, going to break the Vikings. Yeah, just, oh, just no. like you got Vikings have talent. Packers are good. Lions are good. And yeah, that the Bears might get a generational quarterback. So yeah. who knows? Mm, we'll see. Um, and then Justin Fields is a uh, Pittsburgh Steeler. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Last team is the 49ers. I'm giving them an A-. minus. Yeah. It has year. to be an A minus. You beer. make the Super Bowl. Like, come on. I'll give them that, but they did not cover lines very well. That's yeah. the reason why. So at the end of the day, you made it four quarters with the Super Bowl champions in the in the Super Bowl. But so they, they like were a flat a Super, 90. But they <laughs> were a Super Bowl or bust team. And that they is did, true. And they didn't win the Super Bowl. So, so 89.3. You're not. Whoa, okay, whoa. so you're giving them a B plus. Yeah. Okay, and you're not rounding it. Right. No, you said 89.3? Yeah. So, oh, B plus. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sorry, bring just apart. two Jeez. tenths of a point away from being an A minus. Yep. Hey. <laughs> I think I think, like, I think you can make an argument for like in terms of the games they played, like the quality of games they played. I would say probably like get a C. Like they didn't play a quality. They game didn't. Against yeah, Packers. the result was an A minus, yes. but the quality was not. Yeah, there. and I think quality can kind of factor into it a little bit. So I think a B plus mm-hmm. would be a fair grade to give them because like well, yeah, you barely got away from the Packers and Jordan Love and you yeah, squeaked yeah. by against the Lions yeah, and like right. helmet catch and mm-hmm. big comeback lead, but. I'll still give him an A minus because eighty nine point seven. You were arguably a <laughs> a roundup extra point block away from winning the game. Yeah. So so you I give him the A minus, but yeah. you also have Debo on your team, so you're not cracking ninety. There we go. That's there we go. That's fair. I think I'll, I, I'll give him an eighty nine point seven. I'll round up. I'll be nice for them. I'm not. I ha- not. I hate you, Debo. Yeah, we know. To end off both the NFL season and wow. this Valentine's Day. Wow, look at that. Um, we're going to talk about the things we love about the NFL or just the thing we love the most about the NFL. <laughs> the drama. <laughs> <laughs> the drama and NFL memes in Ghetto Gronk. There we go. Perfect. Well, For those that don't know, those are the two big NFL meme oh, accounts. And sports betting. And sports betting. <laughs> um, honestly, I think one of my favorite things i'm gonna get all sappy with this i know it's gonna oh. be all cringe but um it's it's the way that the nfl can bring people together yeah like you know we had this year we had like a super bowl party like and had everybody over we watched all the football games um here at our house and like seeing these clips of like and i know i'm gonna talk about taylor swift a little bit but you know whatever i know you can punch me in the head <laughs> jump him. i know you can jump the me out back later. Over. Know, the plant is gone I we know, don't have to but, keep talking like, about her but here like the thing is is like watching these dads like and their daughters who don't who didn't care about this football season at all before she showed up and then seeing them get so happy like watching the chiefs yeah. win and it's like it really it it is like you know, it's the it's gonna be a cringe line. It's like the, the like the glory of victory, and the agony of yeah. defeat. Like, but it brings people together at the end of the day, and like it really is just like it's a it's kind of magical. No, to watch. I, you've got a good point. I mean, even just like us, all of us, and our friends who yeah. are all football fans. Like, you got me, our friend Andres, Colin, and uh, and Andrew. Like, we're jumping for joy because we like bet on yeah, because you bet, bet on, on something. Yeah, we're like yes, like we're yeah. right. We bet on my ten dollars on the CMC first touchdown, yeah, no. crazy like, hit. We're like, like you're, even whether you're sports betting or just like in just trying enjoy to enjoy the, the game, game like, and, have, and have a rooting interest. It's like you can hang out with people and watch yeah. football mm-hmm. and the Super Bowl. Like it's just one of the like the, it's like the pinnacle of like it brings game. people together. It like yeah. it makes people like it gives that sense of community. Like it's mm-hmm. it's it's really nice. It's the the victory of winning and the heartbreak of losing. Yeah, um, but yeah. some more than others. <laughs> <laughs> I love the season round drama and intrigue because yeah. even though the NFL season is quite short, like we're 200 days away from the next the next snap of football Bro, being played. The combine is like two weeks away. Yep. Yeah. And that's what, <laughs> and that's what <laughs> I'm talking about, right? Like, yeah. 
like instantly after this, we start talking about like you'll hear it maybe next week on the pod or whatever we do yeah. our schedule. We'll start talking about the divisions, what the projection is like. We'll yeah. talk about the draft when it happens, trades that happen, mm-hmm. and suddenly it's training camp and it's like, oh man, it's like right this guy the corner, is yoked yeah. and like oh yeah. they look really good. Yeah, it's and always then, the the picks coming out of people yeah. having enormous legs and, usually, and everything. Yeah, and usually the NFL gets a little bit dry during the NBA postseason because like there's not a lot going on, mm-hmm. the drafts completed and everything like that. But you get a little bit of time off there and then. They're getting back excited to make predictions for the year. And I mean, the NFL football season is so fun. I mean, we can't even talk about other sports on our podcast with no. one day a week because we spend an hour and a half and don't, even about, get, yeah. and don't even get through what we want to get through. Yeah. And that intrigue and that drama and the NFL is so good. There's so yeah. many good teams that can go next year. We'll talk about it next year. But there's like I think this next 15 teams yeah. in the AFC that we think can like this next season, I think is going to be an insane one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's going to be good. I mean, this this season was insane. The season was this season was like the most like uh, like unexpected season. I think I think next year, the quality of play, I think yeah. is going to get a lot better. Besides me, who, of course, picked the Chiefs the whole time. All right. um, the All Chiefs, right. the Chiefs started as a team. Chiefs and Eagles both started the team. It's like, oh, they'll probably they could very realistically be the first like back to back same matchup mm-hmm. that we've had in a really long time. And if you had took in a midseason poll, and said, would that still be the case? Everyone had been like, no. Yeah. Like the Eagles, yeah, they're winning, but they're terrible. Yeah, um, the Chiefs look Chiefs, bad. Like, Chiefs didn't look good. Chiefs won the whole damn thing. Yeah. yeah. And the 49ers probably had the most like consistent, like, yeah, they'll probably go. But then as soon as they got in the playoffs, they looked bad for two yeah. weeks. And then they played a great it's Super It's just Bowl. you never so know. Yeah. You never know. That's and why then, it's any given Sunday. And you also, the best team usually wins. Somehow yeah. at the end of the day. They find they, a way. They find a way to win. So. We love the NFL. Yes. It's the final time we'll be talking about active games that have happened. Yes, but for this season. We'll, of course, hop into the draft. We'll hop into team projections for next year. The NBA is going to come back a little it's bit. It's baseball got the, season. The baseball Red October is coming Hockey's soon. going Catchers on, too. Stay yeah, one. hockey. Yeah. we got the yeah. Olympics in the summer. Yeah, the Olympics over the summer. So, plenty of stuff USA. to join. Yes. Yes. Um, plenty of stuff to tune in for. Um, but we're definitely going to find our little new segments now that we can't break down nfl games but it's been an nfl season it's kind of sad to see it go but it's exciting you know what thank god it's over i couldn't keep watching the eagles (laughs) it's exciting to see what the nfl has in store for this next season i can't wait to watch the eagles play in brazil and lose (laughs) first game of the year (laughs) i can't wait for a brazilian commentator to say the eagles have lost (laughs) great on that note yes Episode 22 of the Coconut Curry Podcast. Thanks for looking. Thanks for checking out the episode. Uh, we'll see you next week. I swear I wasn't doing cocaine. The I Carolina just Panthers blue. will win the Super Bowl next season. What the hell? <laughs>